The Heigl H-177 heavy bomber, dubbed the Luftwaffe Feuerzeug or Air Force Lighter, owing to frequent engine fires and mishaps, was a failed project due to conceptual issues and incompatible design parts. During World War II, it saw little action for the Luftwaffe, with most crashes caused by the technical issues rather than enemy fire. Despite Hitler and Goering's displeasure, several Luftwaffe pilots backed the idea and used it as a dive bomber. The 35-ton plane contributed to Germany's loss by diverting critical resources on an unsuccessful and flawed endeavor. Historians contend that the vast resources required to repair the aircraft may have caused the Third Reich to lose the war in the air. The course setting bomb site was the first practical device to account for wind effects when dropping bombs during World War I. And it was useful in World War I class stages. When utilized from high elevations, though, its accuracy suffered. The aircraft of the late 1930s were more powerful with greater range, altitude, and overall performance. German bomb site technology was especially bad. During the Spanish Civil War, Hitler maintained a tiny air force known as the Condor Legion, which experimented with techniques such as precise dive bombing and Yonkers Ju-87 Stukas. The Condor Legion's experience in Spain backed up the notion that dive bombing was preferable to bomb site bombardment. During the Spanish Civil War, pilots discovered that diving on targets boosted bomb drop accuracy, allowing precision strikes on minor targets such as bunkers, bridges, and ships. Ernest Udek, a German pilot, praised the Stuka and its dive bombing capabilities, advocating for a bigger dive bomber. Luftwaffe pilots felt that pinpoint precision for heavy bombers were attainable and that glide bombing or a shallow angle assault were sufficient for bigger targets such as industries. Unlike Germany's weak bomb site, advancement in glide bombing boosted precision to the point where a single aircraft could take out a plant. Udet and others at the Luftwaffe saw the future bombing as a long-range Stuka with increased weaponry aimed at diving and gliding targets. When General Walter Weffer, a prominent of strategic bombing, died in 1936, the chance to construct this one-of-a-kind aircraft arose. Weffer encouraged the Luftwaffe to construct a long-range bomber specialized to attacking Soviet Union facilities in the Ural Mountains. The initial design for the Weffer plane was known as Bomber A. The Chenol bomber idea was supposed to carry a 1000 kg bomb over a 5000 km at a maximum altitude speed of 500 km per hour. The design goal was to outrun modern fighters and outperform other bombers. In November 1937, a mock-up aircraft designated B-177 was built. The structural robustness of the design for medium-degree diving assault was certified by the Luftwaffe High Command. Heinkel, on the other hand, said that the aircraft would never be capable of properly descending, owing to its massive and large nature, rendering it incapable of performing a near vertical descent without collapsing. The HE-177 was a heavy bomber developed for glide bombing that was capable of shallower dives and glides, but not particularly well. Engineers updated the design to assure safety during descents and to transport two tons of bombs at 362 km per hour to targets 2400 km inside enemy territory. When the war broke out, the HE-177 was categorized as a heavy bomber, allowing the Luftwaffe to reach Allied convoys in the Atlantic and Soviet sites beyond the Ural Mountains. The HE-177 was a German bomber that featured three remote 131 machine gun turrets and was powered by four engines with two propellers. The engines were densely packed and enclosed in cowling to operate a single propeller. 
The twin engines were equipped with a central exhaust system which, which exacerbated overheating and burned any oil or grease that leaked from the motor. On February 1, 1943, Hitler met with his military officials and discussed the Hinkle HE-177 bomber. Hermann Göring, the chief of staff of the Luftwaffe, criticized the HE-177 model during the World War for flaws such as difficulties of fitting two engines on one shaft, its size making it easier to target from the ground, and its huge payload and range burning fuel rapidly. The addition of weight to the aircraft structure for diving aggravated fuel performance even further. Göring later reported that the aircraft had to be grounded owing to high petrol consumption and a lack of fuel. Engineers continued to modify the HE-177 bomber, releasing newer variants and making field improvements. However, none of these modifications could solve the HE-177's intrinsic flaws such as the challenge of stopping the planes to veering abruptly on taking off. Lieutenant Karl Franka, flight of the HE-177 V-1 prototype on November 9, 1939 was cut short after 12 minutes owing to overheated engines. Franca appreciated the bomber's handling but pointed out propeller shaft vibrations, poor tail surfaces and flutter. In 1942, Luftwaffe chief pilot Erhard Milch and armaments minister Albert Schipier went to an airstrip to see the EG-177 take off but after banking inside, it slid into the earth from 150 meters, killing everyone on board. The HE-177 was a strong aircraft that served well during World War II. Although its service was limited owing to its tendency to fall apart, the German Lufthansa 7 bomber site, which was accurate from heights, heights of 4,000 meters, eliminated the need for dive bombing. However, with over 1,500 aircraft manufactured, the HE-177 saw limited duty on the western and eastern front. In one case, 14 planes, taxied out for late-night strikes on London, with 13 of them successfully delivering their payload. On one occasion, Goring watched 14 aircraft taxied out for late-night attacks on London, 13 took off, 8 aircraft returned immediately with overheating engines, 1 diverted and 4 reached London, but 1 was shot down. They however accurately delivered their payload, diving towards the object and then reaching the safety of the skies above 7,000 meters to avoid enemy fire. All bombers that actually made the trip came back unscathed. The mission demonstrated a potential survival rate higher than any other bomber aircraft at the time. Fast, diving heavy bombers could avoid defensive fire. Still, limitedly, the tactic was never evaluated at scale to gauge the plane's overall performance. Eric Brown, a British pilot who flew the HE-177 that was captured in September 1944, said, Somehow, the AT-177 always conveyed an, in an impression of fragility despite its size. It was one of the very few German aircraft of the period that I tested that I did not enjoy flying. During the fight of Stalingrad, the AT-177 was used for evacuating wounded soldiers and delivering supplies. Still, after fuel consumption became a problem, the plane was discharged from further service as the Reich could not afford to waste unnecessary fuel. In October 1944, HE-177 stopped production. Months later, Germany's ruin was complete. Perhaps Luftwaffe could have fought longer and harder with a better aircraft. The Luftwaffe learned their lesson too late. Over-investing resources in a bad design could ruin an entire air force. Historians have speculated that the resources would have been better used for developing more fighter planes capable of protecting German cities.